Ranjit Vagre, our former intern at WRI India, started this walk ar- along the 17 kilometers of Mithi. And it was not easy. He had to move around a lot of urbanized spaces to get to the river. And it took him about 5-6 days in the May, <laughs> month of May uh, of 2022. And after that, uh, we reflected on our observations and wrote up this photo essay series. So, there has been always this argument that there is no space around Mithi River, which has been sort of the premise for us to start this walk of, of 17 km long. Like, you can literally see that to some extent that argument is true. Are very close to the river, but the moment we just walk, let's say a minute or two uh, uh, up further upstream, there are some open spaces actually which have a lot of space to 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 rethink about the the buffer areas around it. Basically, the point is of of identifying these five potentials. Uh, let's say when you have a big reservoir which is uh, pouring its water into the river during rainfall events, how can we identify open spaces around it that would just increase the capacity of that reservoir during those events and hold that water uh, for cer- certain particular time before it enters into the river. So that's like retention of that uh, area, of that water. The second potential is when the river is passing through a relatively naturalized uh, area. Uh, can we let that river swell a little bit and buy more time when it can, comes down to the downstream part? The third potential is that spaces like existing uh, gardens, maidans, for 360 or 364 days, they can function as those maidans and gardens. But for that one day when it is really heavy rainfall, and even within that one day, let's say for four to five hours, when you require that time, this water can be stored over there, held over there for a certain, uh, certain uh, span. And then the fourth potential is spaces like these, where where uh, there is a potential of developing uh, uh, an open space, which comes with a lot of co-benefits. It's it's not only letting the rivers well, it's not only creating a floodable landscape, but at the same time it is treating certain stormwater outlets that are entering into the river in an actual manner by constructed wetlands or something. It's increasing the tree cover, so reducing the heat stress of of the area. It is letting the citizens access these open spaces, which is the big requirement of the city. And at the same time, because we are using the native species, it enhances the biodiversity as well. And then the fifth and the last potential is rethinking the flood protection intervention of how to integrate that within the built environment, how the edge condition of the river profile can be rethought of uh, while we are also addressing the flood protection.